Hey everyone, and welcome to this tutorial with Tyflow, 3ds Max, and Redshift. Today we're going to create this beautiful, sprawling growth effect on a log. We're going to be using some assets from Quixel. Um, to scatter on, we're going to be using some uh, interesting techniques uh, with cinematography, and we're also going to be uh, creating this really interesting growth pattern uh, from, right from scratch with uh, Tyflow. For those who don't know Tyflow, it's a third-party particle uh, plugin for 3ds Max. It's like a super-powered version of the legacy uh, particle interface, which was PFLOW. And um, Redshift is a great GPU renderer uh, that we're going to we're going to dive into too. So first things first, uh, I've got a got a new scene here, 3ds Max, and I'm going to open up my Quixel Bridge uh, and download this log asset. For those who don't know, Quixel Bridge is a really great uh, third-party application from Megascans or from Unreal Engine or from Epic Games that uh, has all these really great high fidelity 3D models that you can just download and pop right into your scenes. Um, it's very, very simple to use. You just open up the interface, you hit the download button and back in your um, 3D application, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your render engine is set. But as you can see here from the Quixel interface, there is textures, 3D models, we've got 3D plants, um, we've got you know brushes, uh, loads of different things. So this is a really fantastic way of, of populating your scene with 3D assets really quickly. You know, and having them all the shaders and all the displacements and all that sort of stuff. Uh, set up directly. So it really saves you a lot of time. Uh, and in here, you can see um, some of the uh, assets that we're going to use for today, which is this old tree branch, or we'll, we'll look at uh, what we can what we can use here. This in your download settings here, you've got uh, all the ways you can pull down this so you can take it down as a JPEG, you can take it down as an EXOR, you can take it down as, as both. The EXOR will, of course, give you like th full 32-bit float um, if you want to, you know, have really, really detailed um, textures and, and lighting and whatnot. Let's create a really basic scatter system uh, with Tyflow. So I'm going to go up to my standard primitives and drop down a Tyflow node. So as you can see, it uh, creates a little icon that says Tyflow, and then from there you'll see uh, on your modifier list you can just hit Open Editor, which is going to bring you up this uh, Tyflow window. Uh, the editor is really, really simple. It's a node-based editor. Um, so we'll just create some really simple uh, nodes here and uh, with the presets, and you can, you can see exactly what they do. So if I right-click, I can just go down to uh, Preset Flows. And here we've got Icon, IV, Object, Physics, Scatter. They are all very basic flows that, that do exactly that. And for now, I think we should just uh, create a simple Icon flow, which is gonna, just going to give you a feel for um, what it is that it does. So if I solo this, you can see that the uh, it's created a little Tyflow icon and the particles are gonna emit from that icon. So if I just run run it here straight, you can see that the, uh, the particles are emitting straight out from this icon. And let's dive in and see exactly which each node does. So position icon, it's this node is gonna tell it where to come from. The speed is gonna give it its speed, pretty basic. You can see if I kill the speed there, it's just gonna it's just gonna birth, so it's gonna give it its direction. The shape um, can be changed. So there's a lot of preset shapes here. We've got cubes, we've got cones, we've got cylinders, all sorts of different shapes here that you can you can play with. You can also pick your own. You can also create a custom shape. What the mesh uh, node underneath is doing that's just telling the render engine to render it. You know, sometimes you want to use particles to do other things and not necessarily render them. Um, so the mesh node really just tells the renderer uh, whether to, to pay attention to them at render time. It's, it's pretty basic. It's stack based. So let's just delete that and, and we'll create a new preset flow. And there's a, there's a simple scatter flow here. And it says uh, scatter particles on selected objects. I'm going to click no for a sec, uh, just, so, just so we can see exactly what that's going to do automatically. So in our position object here, we had position icon on the previous one, but in this one, we're going to have 
uh, a simple birth and we're going to have a position object. So I've just killed the, the timing on the birth there to zero. So it all it all happens on one frame. And I'm just going to go and pick this log as the uh, emitter object. So as you can see, it's emitted onto the faces of the object. It's all pointing the same direction. And under location, you have a really long list of different ways you can scatter, whether it be you know the, the faces, the vertexes, the edges, uh, the volume, loads of different things. You know, in this case, we can use either vertexes or faces. And with the surface offset in the here, you can you can essentially push and pull uh, from the normal vector of that. You also have some great options here. Density by normal, density by texture. You can, you know, use grayscale maps to, to drive density in different areas. You know, you, you've, you have a ton of really great options um, to, to, to do anything you can really think of there. There's some rotational options in here in the rotate uh, node. And the rotate node is kind of going to make the particles um, uh, adhere to the normal direction of the the object. So if I pick the orientation object, if I pick the log, you can see that they've all rotated onto the surface and they're all pointing uh, in the same direction as the log surface is. So that just kind of gives us a bit of an organic feeling straight away. Uh, you, you really feel like they're being birthed off this surface. So again, down on our mesh render here, we're gonna see that uh, I've clicked uh, by default, it's got triangle mesh, and it's got a, it's got render only. So I'm going to set this to render instances. So it's going to just render uh, all those cubes as as uh, one instance. So if I go over and I click my tie flow icon again, I want to pull down to this thing that says interfaces and enable particle interface. So that in combination with that mesh is going to allow us to actually see this uh, particle geometry on the log, which is great. So you can see it all. Uh, right now, it's just default some yellow cubes. And you can see that they're just kind of populated along the log. And uh, that's a very basic scatter system.